The following is a transcript of a conversation between Matthias de Stefano, referred to as me, and his higher self, referred to as I am. This is the 18th of May, 2021. Topic, architecture. Me. As you said, the motions of the universe intertwine waves, creating patterns, figures that design structures. This is the emergence of matter. Matter then would be in constant motion. But why do we perceive it as static? I am. Everything moves, and there are different ways of looking at it, for some movements are deep and slow. This is directly related to the wavelength at which an object develops, that is, what level of frequency its waves have. This would translate into objects of higher gravity that have a low frequency, and therefore their movements are so slow that they are imperceptible to human eyes, such as a precision of the Earth's equinoxes. On the other hand, they can be so fast that they are impossible to see, such as the motion of an electron inside an atom or photons in the environment. Whether faster or slower, they produce the same effect. They become impossible to observe. This is what causes the brain to register it as static because it does not perceive its movement. Me. Oh, I understand. I am. But everything is in motion, and one of the ways to understand it is transformation. Every object that you see has gone through a process of transformation that is considered movement. The cup is gypsum that was once a mountain in another part of the world. The fork is an alloy of metals that come from quarries in another part of the world, forming part of tectonic, tectonic plates that have been built from the melting of rocks in the form of lava by pressure in volcanoes. The mirror is sand, melted particles of minerals once found on beaches and deserts from the erosion of the world's oldest mountains. Everything that appears static to you is in motion at different rates than your own, and so you do not perceive it clearly, just as your eyes cannot perceive colors that are outside the range between 350 and 800 nanometers in frequency. Me. So as we said yesterday, everything is dancing. Only some are dancing to techno music and others to classical dance or ballet, or something slower like the sardana. I am. That's right. Me. And they all follow certain rhythmic patterns, a metric. That generates the structures we talked about yesterday. I am. Tetrahedron, octahedron, hexahedron, dodecahedron, icosahedron, and all those that derive from these figures. Me. And from them appear the foundations that support reality. I am. Which design the no universe. Me. Which gives rise, as far as I can see, to the last of the fine arts of antiquity. Architecture. I am. Architecture comes from the Greek words arche, principle, and tekton, mason, builder, and Indo-European word tek, meaning to weave. The suffix ura refers to the final product. Thus, architecture is the product made by the main builder. Me. In our case, the universe. I am. The term arises in relation to the master builder. In the first instance, humans gathered mud and rocks and put together a structure that they could get inside. But some found techniques to improve these constructions. While it was usually the farmer himself who built his house, or later the blacksmith, the labourer who with his own hands managed to build some were so ingenious that they devoted their lives to something called engineering. Me. Oh, I've never been clear on the concept of what it is to be an engineer. It's someone who possesses ingenuity, who is a genius at solving structural problems in any area. I am. Genius comes from the word gen, which means to give birth, to beget. And in Rome, it was called genius the spirit that was born with each person who guided and gave attributes to the children, like a sort of guardian angel with his wings. In ancient times, this genius was celebrated and offered gifts for having come on the day of birth to accompany the child, the origin of birthday parties. Me. Oh, 
Wow. So we celebrate our genie. I am. To be with the genius, to have wit. So geniuses were considered to be the ones who gave superhuman abilities to some people who were able to change the lives of many. The ingenious became professionals, being engineers, improving the quality of life, especially with the art of construction. In ancient civilizations, the professional in charge of directing the ingenious work was called the chief builder. Hence, we have inherited his Greek name, architect. The architect engineer had to direct the other construction engineers, and to do so, he had to study key things. Mathematics, arithmetic, chemistry, physics, geometry, geography, orography, design, painting. All this in turn led to an understanding of the metrics of music, as well as the physical structures of the human body. There was only one place where so many arts and sciences could be learnt. Me. The Algora of the philosophers. Places like the one portrayed by the artist Raphael in the Vatican mural called School of Athens. I am. In these schools, the ingenious learned and shared about the arts and sciences with great love and gave a transcendental meaning to the subjects of study. It was the universe, a mathematical spirit, that manifested itself in geometries. The cosmos was an orchestra making music with the spheres. The universal spirit designed the most beautiful sciences that gave rise to perfection, and therefore technique and metrics were not enough. The sciences had to have art, beauty, aesthetics, in the same way that the cosmos designed a flower, a peacock, a conch shell. Prior to the Greek schools, the Mesopotamian philosophers, the Egyptians, those of the Indus Valley, the Yellow River and Central America, had also formed their schools, uniting science and the arts as the spirit and body of a creator of God. Many, especially along the Nile, had interpreted that if all that existed was the design of a mind capable of constructing beauty out of geometry, then that mind must be the first builder of the universe. This idea struck a chord with the builders, who ceased to feel that they were mere masons and became nothing more and nothing less than representatives of that God on earth. Me, as the God Toth, the architect, I am. That's right. His holistic understanding of the cosmos allowed him to make the plans that designed the pyramids, not only as a magnanimous construction, but universal, connected to the stars, to the human body, to music, to the mathematical sciences, to beauty, to movement. Architecture ceased to be taken as the construction of houses to become the art of building the body of God, the temples. Its columns, metric, height, width, art in its walls, the form of its walls and capitals, the proportions, the vanishing points, the porticos, the axes and forts or buttresses marked the planning of bringing heaven to earth. Me, Arte Tumti, heaven on earth, was the plan for the construction of the divine body in the mundane. Is it part of the architecture? I am. It was the architects, elevated to the rank of priests, who demonstrated their abilities through the secret techniques directly received from the connection with the divine, me. Which is why, to this day, many of the buildings of the ancient world are incomprehensible to us. We can't understand how they were made. I am. Because they were built with much more than a mallet, a square, and a compass. They were built with the whole universe and all its internal and external factors in mind. For this group of priests, God was the great architect. Me. This I have heard. This is how the Masons refer to God. I am. The history of Freemasonry comes directly from these priesthoods. Originating in the Middle East, the schools of holistic architecture were an initiatory path. Their courses prepared the body, soul and spirit of the people, making them scholars of reality, universal philosophers. Me. Origin of the universities. I am. Exactly. These schools had come as far as Greece, but the Greeks made their journey to the Nile, to Mesopotamia and Anatolia to get the data and the experience. 
With the advent of Christianity and its spread throughout Europe, many of these schools were closed, on the understanding that the mysteries of God must remain as such, and that humans had no right to claim to understand them. Me. And they forbade any universality of knowledge. I am. Islam and Judaism kept these universities alive for a long time, until Christianity imposed itself upon both sister religions, driving them into deciduousness and turning them into extremists. However, across southern Europe, some clandestine schools continued to teach the ancient arts. After the fall of the Roman Empire and the beginning of the Middle Ages, there was a great decline in building, from huge temples and buildings such as the Palatine in Rome to simple Romanesque churches and rustic houses. But everything changed with the rise of the bourgeoisie when the riches brought by the 15th century boosted the growth of the cities, leaving the small churches in ridicule. So Christianity opted to allow architects and master builders to return to Middle Eastern studies and to recover the architectural arts of ancient civilizations to build much larger churches that would tower over the cities as the sole power of God on earth. Me. And so the cathedrals rose. I am. And so arose the brotherhoods of the square and the compass, the architects representing the builder God, all recognizable by their symbols and garb, as well as by their carrying of a gavel. And for this, they were known as Freemasons, from the French maçon, who needs, who moulds. Freemasonry incorporated those university philosophers who sought to understand all the arts of creation in order to build the body of God in the world, as their predecessors had once done. Me. But then Freemasonry moved away from architecture? I am. After the social revolutions of the 18th century, they turned to building new towns, economies, schools, and countries. Remember, they were universal builders, although during the times of religion, Freemasons stuck to the construction of buildings. Thus, the school of Freemasonry became the University of Architecture, to which in a free nation, many could gain access. Me. Architecture then goes beyond making a building. I am. That's right. As art, Architecture is the way to reconstruct the beauty that lives in the mind. Unlike sculpture, which uses materials to give living, naturalistic forms so it, to its products, architecture aims to encompass the world, to translate mathematics and geometry directly into our tangible reality so that we can inhabit it. Every time you see a window, a door, a corner, a nook, the ceiling, you are seeing the proportions of the universe in a tangible way brought down by the human mind. The construction of spaces is an art that gives life to creation itself, but instead of making it an object of worship, as in sculpture, it makes it a home for the living. It allows the individual to live within the cosmos, to experience it, to be a practical part of the work, to be able to live the divine body me. It allows us to experience the sacred geometry, the patterns of light, to touch, to experience the edges and vertices of the cosmic fabric. I am. The first structures were not dwellings, but sacred sites, such as dolmens and menhires, giving rise later to cromlechs, such as the famous Stonehenge. Beyond these Paleolithic and Neolithic constructions, Ziggurats, temples and pyramids spread across the Middle East until the Greco and Romans incorporated classical architecture, which we know today for its three primary styles, Ionic, Doric and Corinthian, according to the shapes of the capitals on their columns. Me. Does architecture also have a holy trinity? I am. Yes. The Romans called it Venustus, Firmitus and Utilatus, beauty, firmness, and utility, respectively. The person in charge of schematizing the sacred trinity was Marcus Vitruvius in the first century BC. Me. Is he the one in the famous Vitruvian man drawn by Leonardo da Vinci? I am. Exactly. Da Vinci designed this man in honor 
and function of Vitruvius' studies of architecture and engineering. However, his scientific and mathematical vision differs from the more symbolic applications of architecture as he describes the technique, but not the modes. Architecture, of course, aims to be useful, practical, and in any case firm to endure over time, as well as incorporating aesthetics, which gives life and soul to the building. However, there are several other factors which differ from this mere logical observation. Architecture is flexible, adaptable, as it changes according to the space that people inhabit, as well as to the movement of its life itself. Architecture is not only present in the generation of buildings, but also in the manifestation of living spaces, which need not be firm and beautiful according to Greek and Latin canons. This lets us understand that architecture is about space and emptiness. Me. Emptiness? I am. Emptiness is the possibility of space. The mind uses the void as fertile ground for the design of living spaces, and so to build yourself, you must find emptiness. Me. Oh. The idea of going into the emptiness within is to find the space upon which I build my life. I am. You are the architect of your own existence and you can redesign your life, but in order to do so, you need to rethink your foundations, the pillars on which your existence is based. Understand what your beliefs are based on the pillar of need, of faith, of passions, of self-knowledge, of love. What do you stand on? Discover the pillars and think about whether you should rebuild it, perhaps adding all forms to the structure. Me. Redesign my home. I am. And to do that, you must take emptiness. Find that clean space from which to rebuild yourself. Me. How do I begin? I am. Blank sheet of paper. Make a map of your home, the one you have or desire. Or draw the plan of your home following the figure of your body on a sheet of paper, where the rooms are your organs. Design the connections, arrange the furniture, innovate the structures, write down the function of each space, add windows and doors to go out, change the pillars and foundations, and the practical way, try to restructure your house or room. Move the bed or a piece of furniture, turn something around, make a change in your space, rearrange. This will move the energy and you will notice the impending change. You can also go beyond blueprints and make a model of your home. Design, awaken the genius in you and be resourceful. Me, awaken the genius in me. I am. You are manifesting a home. Design what it will be like, what you will do in it. Manifest it. Remember what we talked about the first five days of the year in July and August 2020 about the five solids that build reality. Use that knowledge to build your being. You are the architect of your own world. Me. I recognize myself as the architect of my own self. I am. Find the emptiness in you and design the beauty of your being. Firm in yourself, discovering the usefulness of every part of your body and inner world. Me. I am the builder of my own reality the engineer of the soul. I am. You are the Vitruvian man.